Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be making a burial style future garage track from start to finish. We're going to go all the way from putting together the most basic elements to mastering. So if you want to hear the finished track, you can click the link in the middle of the screen right now to hear it. I'll give you a moment to do that. Okay, so now that you've heard that, you can click the link in the description to buy the project file from this video, as well as if you're a patron on my Patreon, Check there, because you can get it there as well. And yeah, let's get started. So, the first thing I've got going on here is I've prepared some chords. So I'll play these for you. I've just got this blank operator patch, but this is what we're going to start with. So I like to start with the chords or like a sample or something since I'm selling this, of course. I made my own chords. Um, but yeah, I like to start with this because I feel like what Burial does really well is he kind of like makes dance music, but he's very much more focused on the music than he is like the dance part, if that makes any sense. And so, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to focus on the music aspect of it first and just get some really nice, much sounding chords that work really well together. So I like this MIDI. I don't really want to use Operator for this. I think the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab analog, and we're going to use analog to make kind of like a deep pad sound. I'm going to take the amp envelope and just kind of shorten that a little bit and make it like that. We are going to get this filter. Let's turn off the envelope on that, and then we're going to turn the frequency down quite a bit. I'll detune these as well. I want to use two saw waves. Actually, let's make it a square wave, and I'll put the square wave an octave up, and then we'll give it some pulse width. I'll turn on alpha 1 as well so we can kind of like modulate that. And so we got to sound kind of like this. So this is kind of cool. Obviously, not very burial-esque, but we're going to do some stuff with it. So if you take this and kind of filter it down, maybe to about there, and then put it through some reverb, we can actually get a pretty cool sound. Yeah, there is good. Kind of sounds like strings almost, but it has this like very warm kind of like analog synth type of feel. So this is sounding quite good. I like also how this LFO is moving the pulse width on this pulse wave because you get like that really subtle motion in the background. If I turn this off, you can hear it's just a little bit more flat. But yeah, not bad. So we've got a pretty deep pad here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some chorus on this before the reverb. That sounds good. Maybe we could put like a little bit of erosion. Yeah, that's cool. I like how that sounds. And also what I think I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to take these root notes. And we're going to put those maybe, or we're going to double those up, maybe an octave down. Mm, yeah, that's cool. Let's keep it. Excellent. So the last thing that I believe I'm going to do here is I'm going to get an EQ8 and I'm going to cut out the lower. Also, maybe put a bit of saturation on this. I like to put the saturation after the reverb a lot of times. Because you can hear it gives it like a cool texture. There we go. And it kind of like blows that reverb out a little bit more as well. All right, cool. So, the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to get some noise. I'm going to get one of my own from here. Um, but yeah, definitely, what I like to usually start with is I'll start with like the loop of the chords, and then I'll start building up the sort of atmosphere around it. Alright, let's use this one. And I like to layer a few together, so let's get one of these other ones. I'm going to put this on repitch mode as well. I'll explain that in a moment. Let's try maybe one from here. 
Dude, that's good. Like I said, I like layering them together because Burial has said a lot, and a lot of other future Garage producers as well have said this. Like, when you layer them together, you get a denser atmosphere, but also it kind of, like, it just coats everything in, like, this bed of this... Of this noise. Like, you hear how, like, when I was just playing the synth on its own, it was cool. But then when I bring these in, you can hear it really adds, like, a lot to it. bit on these as well. I like to process them differently when I use two different ones, especially because these are kind of similar. So like on this first one, I'm going to get a band pass. Maybe we'll make it like 12 dB. And I'll put some saturation on that as well. Nice. And then on this one, we can maybe make it more like high pass. Like I can take a high pass filter. And we can add some, like, erosion to that, maybe. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's sounding pretty good. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use a band pass for this one, but it's going to be a very high-pitched band pass. Or it's going to be very high in the frequency spectrum. Nice, this is sounding pretty good so far. So the next thing I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to come up with like a drone type of sound over top of this. So let's get Operator, actually. And what this is going to do is it's going to add more like musical context. Like it's going to give us kind of some more vibe to the track and some more kind of like just stuff to work with as well. I'll show you. I'm going to use this to kind of create an intro. At this point, we're really just working within like an 8-bar loop. But once I have more elements, you'll see I can kind of take it and start to expand the arrangement a little bit. But we're going to make just like something kind of simple. I'm not sure exactly what note we would use here. Let's try that one, A sharp. They both work equally well, I guess. I like that. Alright, let's keep it on C for now, I believe that was. Cool, so I'm going to start to kind of design the sound here. So the goal with this is I want one of those big kind of like, like I said, like droning, just sort of, High pitch sounds that you hear in a lot of burial tracks. Like you'll hear them a lot in the intros. Like it'll start out with like noise, and something like this will just come in. So we're gonna give this a bit of pitch warble using this LFO. That's good. And then let's. Matter of fact, let's do this. Let's turn off the LFO for now. Yeah, let's do that. And then I'm gonna put some reverb on this. Excellent. You can hear the reverb helps to give it kind of a more, like, ethereal texture. Like, this is very kind of, like, clean and simple, but when you add that, like, already you're adding a lot more, like I said, like, texture and vibe to it. So let's maybe work with this some more. I'm going to pitch this up. The thing with these sounds is they can be kind of tough because you're basically trying to make it sound, like, not just, like, a dry FM synth. You're trying to give it, like, life and really kind of... bring it to life so to speak. Alright, let's turn this amount up and then I'll turn this destination A down. So I still want this LFO on here. On the pitch. Like that, just kind of going slowly up and down. Um, but I'm also going to put this on the oscillator volume of B, or the volume of oscillator B. So you can hear we get some movement with it too. Nice. And then some low passing, it helps because you can hear those like really bright highs. 
aren't really ideal for a sound like this. Hey, that's cool. Alright, nice. I like to kind of do everything like while the track is playing. Like I try to sort of solo instruments as little as possible because like truth be told nobody besides you is going to hear your track like the individual elements of your track on their own unless you have some part in the song I guess where like all the individual elements are just playing on their own but like yeah nobody's really going to hear that except for you like it only really matters in the context of the song because that's all the people are going to hear so I try to work on everything like while hearing everything so I can kind of you know just make stuff that sounds good that way. Cool. So the next thing I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to start getting some drums. And so I have some UK garage drums in here in this folder. I believe actually I saved it over here. Yeah, there we go. So I've got a bunch of UK garage drums here and I'm going to take these. And what I really like using or what I really like about using these kind of like old school UK garage drums for this is for one, as you know, it's future garage. It's very much based on UK garage, but these sounds have like a lot of character to them. Like if you listen to them, like, that's not just, like, a basic, you know, clean kick sample. It's kind of got some texture and some grit to it that just makes your track that much more interesting. So let's find a kick here. Just to start with. It doesn't matter a whole lot because... I mean, I can always go in and, like, work with it some more. Alright, let's start with that one because it's kind of small. And let's get a snare as well. And so what I usually do is I like to start with the kick and the snare and just get at least some kind of a pattern with those. And then I'll start to go in and add like all the cool percussion. Let's do, yeah, let's do like that. I kind of have an idea in mind. This is something also like where you just have to kind of get started with it and just like throw yourself into it and then you end up coming up with something cool. All right, maybe we'll do something like this. If I move that back a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. Like I said, I'm just trying to get something to start out with here. Oh, oh my God. Nice. So I can maybe go through and try to find a little bit of a better snare sound. But again, it's like I was saying, it's like once you get this sort of just set up. Like, you're already, you're already a lot further along than you were when you were just thinking of it in your mind. So that's why I try to just, you know, get something playing. And then we can always go back and work on it. the kick maybe we try low passing it a bit all right that works for a 
start. Um, but now what I can do is I can start bringing in, like, some hi-hats. So, let's get a drum rack, and I'll just grab a bunch of hi-hats out of here. Maybe we'll get some, like, percussion sounds as well. But yeah, like, what I'm usually going for with these kind of hi-hats for, st for this style of track would be something kind of just, like, smaller. Maybe not so much, like, like these very obvious, like, 909 style hi-hats. Like, maybe something kind of smaller like this, like, a little bit gentler, so to speak. I like that. That's got kind of a cool sound to it. And we'll get that, too. I like these really small ones. All right, let's get that. That's kind of interesting. And we'll get that as well. All right, so that's something pretty solid to start out with. And just to make it kind of easy on myself as well, I'm going to get an EQ8 and just put it on here and cut out some lorn because you can hear some of these. You can't hear it now, but you can hear some of these had a bit of, like, kind of nasty lorn. But that's okay. You know, you it's cool to have samples like this where they have a bit of texture, and sometimes that's just sort of what you got to deal with. All right, so let's try and come up with a pattern here. together pretty nicely with these it can be a little tough sometimes but uh yeah the key is just to try to make it sound really fluid like you can see like i'm playing around with the velocities a lot here and just trying to make this feel as organic as possible because that's what i think is really cool about burial and like in general a lot of future garage producers drums is like they sound very fluid and very organic, but they also sound, like, programmed, and they still have, like, that UK garage kind of, like, sound to them, if that makes any sense. processing on the drums. I'm going to try grouping these together. Let's just put a drum bus on there. Okay, because this one is still not exactly what I want. Let me try one of mine. Alright, I'm going to 
try laying the snare with something as well. So to make these kind of like burial style future garage rim shots on your own, it's actually not that difficult. A lot of times, myself included, people try to look for them online. It can be kind of hard to find, but actually you can make them pretty easily using like any snare sample. Like let's take, let's just use this one. It's from the Ableton library. If we take that and pitch it up maybe like plus seven, You can hear it kind of helps the layer in there. It gives that snare like a lot more punch. pretty nicely so put an EQ on, a bit of EQ on this group as well nice so let's start kind of structuring this out a little bit because I have this idea for a structure I'm gonna take this and just copy it over there Basically, this idea that I want to try is it would start something like this. So we'll start with the noise. I'm going to put the noise a little bit before, like, just the perfect start. What I like to do a lot of times when you're making tracks where you want it to have kind of like an intro that isn't perfectly just going to start on bar one, like, like this, for example. If I want to make the start on, like, in between bar seven and eight, like, I'll do something like this. So I'll start the track at bar nine. So this way you have a little bit of space. And then this is basically, like, if I make the marker here, this is basically the one like that is where the track is actually like you know hitting the first one but this way you can have these kind of in there and it doesn't have to be so like stuck to the grid or so like linear that way as like if you just started everything literally like right here in your project file so we'll start that about there and let's grab this little operator thing that i made and what i'm gonna do i think actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna freeze it um, and we're actually going to resample this. So if you don't know what resampling is, it's basically when you take something that you've made, like in a synth or in a digital synth, in this case, and you just freeze it and then you flatten it like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to put this into a granulator. So the granulator, if you don't know, is a granular synth from Max for Live. If you get the project file for this video, it will be included in that. Um, but basically what it does is it's, it's a granular synth. And what a granular synth is, is it's very similar to a sampler in where it's just playing back a sample from, yeah, like, but the way that a sampler would work is a sampler would play the sample from start to finish, like, just from the beginning to the end, nothing more. Um, what this does is it takes a sample and it plays all different parts throughout the sample. So if I grab this and drag it onto there, um, basically you can see that that little yellow line is moving around. That's it, moving across the sample, playing different spots. So, it's a really cool way to create kind of like a seamless loop with something like this. And then basically the spray knob here is like how much it's going to jump around. Okay, that's why I wouldn't stop. I had to release all the way up. Anyway, so let's take this and... We'll here, let's have these start at bar... Like right there. And then we'll have this start there. And I'm just going to make this sort of go into the intro there. And what I like doing is having this kind of just start at like like these different times. Like I said, like it's not going to be just perfectly on the grid exactly like, you know, just starting at the one. It, this is going to be like where things sort of come in. So I guess we can delete this track now. That won't really be necessary anymore. Um, but what we can do is I'll take a utility here. And we can just kind of fade this thing in. And so this will just kind of, you know, start out the track a bit more smoothly. I've done this in other tracks that I've released before, but like.
That's cool. I'm actually going to drag these back a bit, though. I want to have them go for a little bit longer before everything is going to come in there. So let's do it like this. And then we'll drag those out. And we'll drag this one out. Oops. We'll drag this one out as well. Um, Let's make that legato. All right, now let's hear it. And I'm going to copy the drums into here as well. All right, cool. Let's hear this. Cool, that is a very good start. So you can see it kind of comes in just in a little bit more of an interesting way there. We have like kind of more of a structure to it. Now, this does feel a bit empty when it's first coming in. So what key are we in again? I have this idea to just put like a little bass drop thing there. Like something really simple I can make with operator. Basically, I'm just going to take a sine wave here. And what we'll do is we'll play it super low like that. And I'm going to have this pitch envelope just go down. Like maybe like that. I don't know. We can refine it more. But that will come in like right when the drums start. And I'm just trying to give it like some extra stuff so it's not just like... There we go. And it's just like subtle, you know, it's not like too over the top. It's not like one of those big EDM ones where it's like, it's just something kind of subtle that's in there. And yeah, now the next thing I think I'm going to do to help fill this out a bit is I'm going to get this sample that I have that I actually recorded myself of myself walking through a city. If it will play. Let me just grab it and drag it in. But I'm going to put this in the background, and we'll maybe have this, like, kind of fade up a bit as well. But this will help to give us, like, some background kind of stuff. Because, like, this feels pretty empty right now. So let's, let's do this. Let's put a little fade on that. And... Oh, there's me, like, coughing. All right, let's do this. That is awkward. Let's take this and drag it over a little bit. Awesome. And there's, like, some wind noise in the sample and, like, all that kind of good stuff. I don't even mind that. I kind of like having stuff like that. It makes it a little bit more interesting because you have, like... You have, like, all those little things happening, like, in the sample. And it's adding, like, all this cool kind of, like, background percussion almost. You know, like, it adds more... More vibe to your tracks, you can hear. So I'm also going to high-pass that a little bit. Nice. And then, obviously, we've got to bring this thing over quite a bit. And I'm probably going to put some more reverb on this as well. You can really, like, with these kind of drones... You really can't have too much reverb in this style, I find. Because, like, everything is just so atmospheric. Nice. So, the next thing I think I'm hearing here is I want a bass line. So, let's make a new MIDI track. And I'm going to grab the chords. The MIDI from the chords, that is. I'm just going to get rid of all these top notes here. And what we'll do is I'm going to get, I guess I will use operator for this. Let's do operator. I usually use operator for these spaces. But let's put it on this FM algorithm. So these oscillators are just going to be playing side by side. They're not going to be doing any FM. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change this to a saw wave. We're going to change. We're going to bring the second one up. Let's put it to minus 10, just like the first one. There we go. And then we are going to put that to a saw wave as well. We're going to detune it a bit. And then we're going to put a low pass filter on. And now this should sound like this. Nice. So we have like a very deep sort of dark re-space there. So let's just hear what this sounds like.
And then I'm going to put a little, like, pitch bend there as well. Maybe we'll do, like, an even crazier one here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so you see those little pitch bends I have where they're sort of, like, overlapping? That's something that Barrel does a lot as well. And what you have to do to get this kind of sound, I'll show you what it sounds like in a moment, is basically you put the overlapping notes there. In this case, I just have them jumping an octave at a time. But then what you do is you go into your synth. In this case, I'm using operator. So what you do is you set the voices to one, um, meaning just one note can play at a time. And then you have to turn on this glide. And once you do that, and we'll turn the time up a little bit, you can hear we get like that cool kind of like bass glide there. And we can make it a little bit longer as well. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Alright, let's copy that over. I want to see something here. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so what I wanted to do in this part is kind of have a little bit of a different progression because I just feel like, you know, it's nice when you kind of tease it. Like, this isn't the whole chord progression as it comes in right here. But we're just getting kind of like a taste for it here. Uh, we could probably bring this drone down a bit. I'm gonna add some. Oops. I'm gonna add some auto pans to that. It's a little tough because this chord progression sound has like kind of a darker minor feel to it, but at the same time it does have like a very major feel to it when you just play the bass notes. Alright, so maybe we will have hmm. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have this sort of cut out there. We'll have the noise keep going. And then what we will do, I realize that I just deleted the chords. There we go. Okay, so we'll have this keep going here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to drag the noise out here. We'll have the bass and the drum stop there. And then let's just get rid of this stuff because we don't really need it right now. Um, but I'm going to grab the chords. And what we'll do is we'll have this stuff end here. And we can have the chords come in. Now I'm going to make them more smooth coming in because I know it just kind of appears out of nowhere there. But this is kind of like a smooth way to do it. This is sort of like, I hear this a lot in burial checks. Like he's good at kind of transitioning this way. And also like, I want to show you like how I'm coming up with this arrangement as well. Like you can see, I don't really have anything particular in mind. I'm kind of just going as, as with the flow, I guess. And just sort of like, you know, I mean, really all I had was just this, this idea for the intro and then the chord progression. And I'm just kind of seeing, like, where that takes me. But yeah, so let's have this part here. I'm going to get this utility. Yeah, there we go. And I'm turning on the automation lock here. So what this does is it basically makes it so I can duplicate this, but it's not going to duplicate that automation because if I turn that off, you can see it duplicates the automation. But this way, we can just... There we go. So we can have it go into the next part. So let's keep making this longer here. <laughs> this drone, I guess, is just going to play through the track. I'm not really entirely sure what I'm going to do with that just yet.
let's do this. I'm going to copy the drums over here. This is a bit of a straightforward arrangement right now, but, you know, I'm just trying to sort of build it up and see see where it takes me. So let's copy that, and we will take this, and then we're going to grab these as well. And so at this point, I kind of want to add something new. So let's make a new drone sound. So I believe that last one was playing C. Let's try, I know some of the other notes that worked. Let's try F and C. But when by introducing this here, we can kind of like build the arrangement up a bit more because it kind of starts off a bit slow with just that one drone. And then as like we get more chords and more like the bass and just kind of more fleshed out, more things are coming in. Let's also try putting it on A sharp because that worked. And I think that will have kind of like... Alright, cool. So that worked. So now we can kind of like work on this sound a little bit more as well. And I'm just doing this very similarly to how I did, similarly, I'm not sure if that's a word, um, in a very similar manner to how I did that last one where I'm just kind of like playing around with FM here and getting a feel for like what sounds good, you know? Turn that off of the, uh, pitches. Let's try using an echo for this one because echo can give you a really cool kind of like spacey effect like this if you use it right now we can even try like some grain delay too like that's a good technique for these and I'll show you how you can use it we turn the dry wet down You see, you can use it to bring in, like, a bit more brightness with this. I want this kind of fade in in this part as well. Like, it'll literally just build for this whole... I don't know how many bars it is. It's either four or eight. I believe it's eight. to this part is there's not really like a whole lot going on in the drums here and I think they're kind of suffering for that so I'm going to try some techniques so the first thing that I want to do is I want to do some stuff with these sort of like hi-hats so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring an audio effect rack in and we're going to make two chains on this so this is basically I'm going to have some like parallel processing here parallel processing being basically when you have like a sound playing and you have an effect on it but then you're sort of like a being it with or blending it in with the dry signal. So we're going to make two chains here. Let's name one of them dry. I will name the other one wet. And what we can do on the wet channel, for one, I just want to try like some simple filtering. Like what if we just... Do something like that. And I can maybe try putting some echo on it. We can also maybe try one of these shaker loops that I made. Which you can hear kind of helps like this part come to life a little bit as well. I'm going to just make that like a shorter, shorter thing. Though. So 
now I want to try and see where I'm going to go for the next part here. Like maybe I'll just. <laughs> chord progression so far i feel like we need to add some more interesting stuff in here let's hear this from the beginning and just see where we're at so far i'll get rid of that new part because it's just kind of cut there but for this next part here i've decided that i'm going to add some vocal chops so what i've got here is i've got this sort of technique that i've shown you guys on my channel before um in a few other videos but basically what it is is to record your own voice just kind of singing some random stuff and then you put it through some sort of auto tune so here i've used this free vsc called g snap it's made by gvsc i'm gonna put the link in the description so you can get it like i said it's completely free it's no issue there if you still want to use this project file and you don't have it but yeah, basically what I did with this is you can see I've set it to F minor and then I've got it kind of set like this. So it's doing like this very fast autotune. And I just kind of recorded myself, like I said, just doing a bunch of random stuff, which sounds like this. <laughs> parts there. <laughs> like that. But you can hear, we got some kind of cool stuff to work with. And what we can do is we can take this and I'll just like straight up freeze it with the auto-tune on there. Alright, and then we just gotta flatten that. And then now we've got this whole thing. And what we can do is we can start chopping this up. So maybe I'll put this like in the part where this there's this little transition, for example. Like here, I'll just take this. We'll have one over here, which will be sort of like the master. And then we can just take this and just start chopping it. So I'm going to actually unwarp it. Maybe we could do like this. Like we'll just grab this part of it and we can reverse that. And what I'll do, let's put this on a new track. What I'll do is I'll put some reverb on here. We can also maybe give it a bit of a fade. And we can put some reverb on it. And we get kind of like a cool thing here. And there you go. You get like those cool kind of like burial style vocal chops. And then we can just grab like different parts of this now. And just move it around. Here, let's grab this one, we'll warp it, and then I'll pitch this one up an octave. And like I said, I'm really not a great singer, but you can hear, it comes up, comes up with some really cool stuff, and it's nice to have these, because they kind of break it up a bit. Like, you can see, this is very much, like, repetitive and very loopy. Like, I was playing it before, and it literally just sounded like a bunch of loops, but 
we start to bring in sort of like little incidental stuff like this and like how this little noise sample at the bottom has all those extra little kind of like clicks and pops and stuff you start to bring it to life a little bit more so let's take this and i'll cro let's just copy the main one i'll grab this part that same part i used for the beginning but then we'll do some stuff with it so let's take this and you can also like get creative with these like you can start you know kind of stretching them out maybe and we can take it and we can pitch it up but we can put it on complex pro so we'll get it like kind of format shifted <laughs> There we go. And for that one, I'm actually going to do a separate track. That's the other cool thing with this is you can start putting them on like different tracks and put different processing on them. Like this one, I'm going to get that same reverb. Maybe we'll make this reverb a little bit less wet. And then on this one, I'm going to take an auto filter and we'll put a bandpass filter. So I'm going to take a little bit of this for the intro as well so we can kind of like give that some more some more vibe. Um, let's maybe put this let's put this one on the bandpass channel and I'll just take it and we'll drag it over to like there. And then this one I'm just going to make it like twice as long. Let's put this on complex mode as well. Let's hear what that sounds like. Let me reverse it as well. That's kind of cool. It grabs your ear like right at the start there. Nice. All right, let's grab like another part of that, and we'll put that on the non the non bandpass channel. There we go. And again, like I'm just grabbing these and just moving them around the arrangement and you can see like we're coming up with some really cool stuff this way. Um, and it's less like, you know, it doesn't take, not that it doesn't take as much effort, but it's not as like kind of like mind numbing as just sitting there and trying to like perfectly calculate everything. You know, we're aiming for more, not like happy accidents because I pretty much know what's going to happen, but like sort of doing stuff and then seeing how it sounds and kind of working based on that. <laughs> What if I try pitching that one down? I want to see. Yeah, there we go. Nice. We're going to put a bit of erosion on this as well. But that really helps to kind of bring it to life because you're getting all those like that all that kind of like extra stuff in the background from all that reverb and it's really it really makes it sound like very rich melodically let's put one in the little intro as well like i'll grab this and we'll just drag it out and find another part and see oh we can pitch that one up like a bunch let's just do a little short one there also see like i try to do all this stuff like while the track is playing as well because it goes back to what i was saying before it's like the people are only ever going to hear your track like while everything is playing so it's better to just edit it that way because then like i said you're you're working more like realistically with what people are going to be hearing as opposed to like just sort of like what you're hearing in your head or like what whatever you may think it sounds like on its own <laughs> Oh, that was from the weird part. Let's have that little... Cool. So I'm gonna make these 
Oh, there we go. Okay, that's what happened. Okay, so I'm going to make these drones just go out to the end there. And let's have those kind of, like, fade a little bit as well. Because I kind of like the idea of doing that. Like, having them kind of, like, fading in and out of the track. So it's not just, like, starting and then, you know, playing the whole way through. future garage tracks so now what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a bit of mixing so i'm gonna get all of these instruments and kind of like put them into some groups so let's group let's make like a noise group i'll call that noise group and then let's get like a vocal group we'll call this vocal group and then we'll take i guess we can just kind of keep that Let's put that with the bass, and we'll call that the bass group. Bass group. And then we'll make one with the pad and all of these little drones, and we'll call that the melodic group. And so this way, we kind of have everything, like, all together. And it allows us to put some, like, processing on everything, which... Oh, whoops. Melodic group. Um, which is important, because, like, I feel like to get these really vibey style tracks to work well, like, where they're just sort of, let's also name the drums, drum group, but where they're just so, like, based on sounding so, like, textured and warm and all that kind of stuff, you really need to process things together, because what happens is, you were kind of, like, putting everything under the same, like, textural and sonic umbrella, like, you're putting, you know, all of the drums, for example, under this EQ8 and this drum bus, and you can hear, like, when I play these together without this, versus with it, you can hear it just really helps glue them all together. And that's the goal here. We're trying to make everything kind of have a similar vibe. So the drum group is sounding pretty good to me. I'm going to go to this bass group here. And let's put a bit of saturation on there so we can make it kind of warmer and stronger sounding. That's pretty good. And I'm also going to put a bit of EQ on there. Because I want to cut out kind of like the boxy frequencies around like 2 to 300 hertz. There we go. You see also, I like to like A, B things. Like when I put a very subtle effect on like that, I don't just like make it and then leave it. I like put it on there and then kind of like see if it sounds good by turning it on and off and just seeing, yeah, how that works. So that's pretty good on this melodic group here. I think for one, I'm actually going to put a bit of OTT, um, which may seem a bit crazy, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the amount down a bit there. And you can hear that just gives it a bit more kind of like power. And just makes it like really strong, I feel like. So I'm also going to chill out on the saturation on the chords. So I'm also going to put an EQ8 on this group because I want to cut out some of the low end and just make sure that it's going to be clean and not like get in the way too much. But you can see like I'm just going in here and trying to like finalize everything and like polish everything off. Like I'm not so much like mixing. I feel like this is something I've been trying to talk about a lot on my channel lately. But I feel like there's this really popular misconception with mixing where it's like people feel like their track is supposed to sound kind of dry and bland. And then, like, the mixing is what's going to take it over the edge and make it sound super good. Or maybe even the mastering, you may think, is what's going to make it sound, like, really good and take it that last little percent to kind of get it more close to a professional track. And that's really not true. Like, you see, like, the mixing can help a little bit. Like, for example, adding this OTT on the melodic stuff does kind of make it sound a bit better. But, like, overall, it's on you to, like, really collect, like, the best sounds in your track and, like, put them all together and just kind of, like... 
do it that way. Like you're not you're not gonna fix it with mixing. Mixing is just that final little bit of polish to make everything like really work together as a track at the end, like I'm doing now. But yeah, so we can saturate this, and I like saturating these together because it helps to glue them together. It's very similar to what I did on the drum bus or on the drum group with that drum bus effect. Nice, and on the drum bus, or on the drum group, I keep calling it a bus. I do want to bring up the kick a bit more. And that's pretty good. So next, I'm going to get this vocal group. And on the vocal group, we are going to put some OTT as well. And I'm going to turn the amount down. It's a really good technique to kind of like beef up your sounds. Like I'll show you. There's without it, and then with it. You can hear it just really works with these vocals well. And I know I kind of showed you that with the melodic stuff, but it also is working similarly here. And we'll cut out the line on that as well. Maybe we'll cut it about to there, just to make sure. You can hear this track is like really coming to life this way. So on the noise group here, I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to saturate these a bit because I like getting them kind of crunchy. session view here and you can see something is happening here on the master that I don't really want to have happening at this stage so if you look we're at about like the loudest part like right here you can see it's peaking at like minus 0.99 so basically minus one that's not really what we want at this point at this point what you want to do is just select everything in here like in this case I'm just selecting all the groups I'm gonna turn these down until it says it's at about yeah, like about there. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. We want it between like minus five and minus six. And this is because the next thing that we're going to do is actually a bit of mastering. So I'm going to do the mastering inside of the project file here. That's totally fine to do. It's like really no reason why it wouldn't work. Um, But yeah, so the first thing that I'm going to do here for this mastering is I'm going to go on the master, Um, obviously. <laughs> And I'm going to put a little bit of EQ. So basically mastering is just about getting your track to like have that professional kind of volume and that professional kind of like power. And yeah, just really making it work and have as strong of a mix as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do with this EQ is I'm going to cut out a bit between like two and 300 hertz. I did this on one of these other instruments up here, I believe on the bass. But this really helps to kind of open up your mix. Cause that's where a lot of the like quote unquote boxy frequencies are, like those kind of like, like that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna cut it too sharp, like nothing below six hertz or minus six dB. Oh, uh, but you know, just a bit to kind of cut out those boxy frequencies. So we can maybe tighten up the cue a little bit on that as well. And the next thing I'm gonna do on here is I'm gonna do a high end boost and I'm gonna do a low end boost. And so. The reason why I'm doing these is because often the very low end and the very low lows and the very high highs are kind of like not as powerful on our tracks. And those are that's really what creates like the clarity. Like 
when you hear a mix and you feel like it has a lot of clarity or when people describe a mix as having a lot of clarity, oftentimes they're talking about it has like that really sharp high end and that really deep low end. So I like to go on my master here. And just kind of do a little bit of that or kind of boost those a little bit. Because you can hear it really helps to improve it. So here's what it sounded like before the EQ. And here's with it. So you can hear already it's helping to like brighten up the mix a little bit. And just again, kind of like take it a little bit further and get it to have that kind of nice, very clear sound. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to add a little bit of saturation. So... I know this may seem a bit unorthodox, but I actually like to use a little bit of saturation on my master. I feel like it's a good way to just kind of like glue everything together. Because what happens, if you don't know, like when you put saturation on a lot of stuff or at once, especially when it's like got some low end and some high end at the same time, is it kind of helps to glue everything together. Like you get this nice sort of like crunchiness to the sound. That again, I feel like really is gluing everything together nicely and it just works really well for this kind of thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the drive up a little bit while the track is playing. I'm going to turn the output down a little bit as well, because I still don't want it to be hitting too hard. Like, that's good. You can see I'm still looking at this little thing over here. So, here's what it sounds like before the saturator. And here's with it. You can hear it helps to give everything just a bit more texture and kind of like glue it all together and it's again that same thing I was saying about like umbrella processing like we're putting everything under the same like quote unquote sonic umbrella that really helps to glue it all together. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a little bit of compression and I don't want to do a whole lot of master compression here but I want to do a little bit of it to just help glue everything together a bit more than I'm already doing with these other things. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to hit play. And you can see this green little thing here that keeps jumping up, that's basically the input. And then the threshold is, if you don't know, how much we're compressing it. We're basically setting the threshold for where compression is going to start. So if we set it down here, really quiet sounds are going to compress it. But if we set it up here, then we're just compressing the loudest of the loud sounds. So that's what we want to do. We just want to compress it very slightly. So we do kind of flatten it out a little bit. But not so much to where it's like, you know, like this is way too much. Like that's just crazy. Um, but we do a little bit there. You can see it helps. And another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn up the attack. The reason why I want to do this is because the attack is basically how long it takes the compression to kick in. So like if you have a longer attack time, basically it will kick in toward like the end of your sound. And you won't mess up like the transients at the start of the sound. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Because if you look at like these drums, for example, you can see they have really sharp transients. You can see we have like this little thing over here right at the start of that. That's the transient. And that is what is really like the punch of your drums. And all you, the other sounds have that as well. It's just not as pronounced as with the drums. But we don't want to mess that up. If we flatten that out, the drums and the other sounds aren't really going to like hit. Like they're not going to have that impact because it's just going to be flat. You're not... It's not going to sound like it's going from a very loud sound to a very quiet sound. It's just going to sound like it's just one kind of like medium volume sound. So that's the purpose of this attack. We can turn it up and it'll make it so the compression isn't going to kick in on those transients. And it'll kind of like just make it a bit cleaner and the drums won't get like too compressed. And the other sounds as well. I've also turned the compression ratio up a bit. Just to make it do a little bit more compression. So here's what it sounds like without the compressor. And then with it. So you can hear it really helps bring it to life. Like I said, we're only doing it very subtly. It's not compressing a lot of those like quieter sounds. It's just taking those peaks and kind of flattening them out a little bit and squashing it ever so slightly to where it's helpful. So thing we need to do is you can see we're not quite hitting at like 0 dB and we don't want it to be right at 0 dB like just kind of slamming there but we want it to be up there because everything else is going to be that loud like all the other professionally mastered tracks are that loud so the last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a limiter on here and this may be a little bit of an unpopular thing but with a limiter on the master there's kind of like a few different ways you can do it there is the way that 
most people use it when they're first starting out, which is to just drop a limiter on the master so that when you have a sound that's way too loud or if multiple things are playing at once and they're distorting the master or making it go into the red, it won't happen and the track will in some way be cleaner. That is one way to use it, which is like not preferable. Obviously, you know, it's kind of like something that you do when you're first starting out and that's sort of how it is. But the other way you can use a limiter on your master is to turn up the gain ever so slightly when you want to do it like this. Like if your track just isn't quite hitting where you want it to, like it's at minus two, for example. And then what it'll do is it will ensure that when you, if you do have like one or two sounds that's a little too loud that kind of goes over, you can get like, yeah, it, it'll make sure that that's not peaking basically. That's why you want to just use like a utility or something. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just turn this up like 2 dB and let's see. Yeah, see, there we go. So you can see the green is moving there. And we're hitting at like minus 0.5, minus 0.6. But you can hear we've got a lot more volume in the track. And it really brings the volume up there. So again, we're using this to just sort of take it up to that higher dB range that we want without going overboard like this this will just ensure that in case there is one or two sounds there that peak a little bit it won't it won't go over zero db and that's not such a big deal like again it's not the same thing as just dropping a limiter on like right when you start a track just to make sure that you're not clipping so just to kind of show you what we did here here is before mastering and here's with it it really helps to give the track a lot more power and just kind of bring it to life a bit more. So now that we're at the end here, I think I'm going to play the track from start to finish. Here's what we've created in this video. Had to draw in that quick little fade out at the end there. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I got a bunch of requests to make a track like this, like a full track like this. And I hadn't really seen any videos like this on YouTube. So I figured I would do it. Um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. So that's me for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Once again, you get the project file and the samples for this track in the description. So if you want to get that and be able to kind of deconstruct it, a little bit more on your own. It's all available in the description, like I said. Um, you can also get it if you're a patron on my Patreon. So check there. Thank you so much, everybody. And I will see you again with another video shortly.